Welcome to this video on using VLOOKUP in Microsoft Excel. And in this example, I'm going to be looking up multiple cells of data because I've got quite a little bit of information I want to play around with. But it's still super simple, super easy to work with, giving you all that confidence that you can do the processes and take it away with your data. This is something that's come up recently that I've been playing around with, and I was looking for the best and the simplest and the quickest and easiest way to make this happen, because I have a report very similar to this that I need to collate. And then off the system, I get a report that looks a little bit like this, that gives me information, a lot of information. Now, if I go back to it, what I'm looking for is have these people, so you've got names and email addresses and a training course, completed that training course. Now, the document that I get down that I need to do the VLOOKUP on gives me the name, the email address, and then multiple training courses. And that user, that person, so let's say Alice Johnson at the top there, might have actually done multiple training courses. But from my reporting point of view, I'm only interested in Word. And you can see already at the top, Alec A. Johnson has already has done at least Excel as well as Word. So if I'm going to do a VLOOKUP and find all this information, I need to be looking at the unique identifiers. So Alice's simplest unique identifier is her email address. It's pretty standard across the board. And then I need to look up the training course because it might be that Alice is also there or Alice is also there on another one as well. And rather than you having to play around with the data, you want to just be able to quickly do that VLOOKUP from that data set. So one of the ways to do this, and I'm not by any means saying this is the only way, there's lots of different ways, but I wanted to show you one way that I would have done this. And what I'm going to do to do that is I'm going to use concatenate first. Before I do a VLOOKUP, I'm going to concatenate, so I'm going to pull together the email address and the training course on both my report and my data sheet as well. So I can use that as a VLOOKUP. So, because I can't VLOOKUP on two cells, I'm pulling it together and then I can VLOOKUP on the one cell. So I do need to do this on both tables. So let's in my report in first, let's just go in there and right click and insert a cell and then do my concatenate. And I can hide this once I've done it as well so that I don't see it on the report. So whenever you're doing a function, remember it's equals and then start typing in the simple name. So it's concat I'm looking for. I want to concatenate or group together the email address. Remember when you're splitting up your function, you're going to comma. And then I'm going to put a space in the middle so that it's nice and easy to read on the screen. And I'm going to do the same thing for my other one so it's nice and consistent. And they give me back the same formatting. So to do a space, I'm going to put it in speech marks. So I'm going to do a speech mark, a space bar, and then a speech mark. Just so the system knows that I want a space in between those two sets of data. You don't have to put that in there, but I think it's nice and clean. Comma, and then select the other cell. Close your brackets and press enter. And that's then grouped those together so that I can now see. I'm looking for that information. I'm looking for the unique identifier of the email address and also the training course. So let's go ahead and do that on the other table. So I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna right click and insert a cell. I'm gonna equals and concat. I'm gonna select the email address. I'm gonna comma to break it up. I'm gonna do my space in speech marks. Oops. Speech mark, space, speech mark, comma, and then final cell. Close brackets and press enter. Nice and simple and easy to work with. And you can see how that's now the same sort of formatting because we're going to VLOOK up against those. So I'm just going to drag that down here and then I'm just going to reduce it down a little bit so it just keeps it a bit cleaner. Go back into my other one and I didn't do it before but I'm going to click and drag that down from the bottom right in order to then copy and paste. And again, let's just make that a bit smaller so it's cleaner. So now what I want to do is do my VLOOKUP because I've now created that unique identifier across my report and my data set. So 
in that cell that I want this information to be in, let's do an equals and VLOOKUP. So I'll double click on that one. And then I want to select my lookup value. So what am I looking up? I'm looking up that concatenate that I've just created. So I'm going to do E2. Then I'm going to comma. And then it wants to it wants to know where that data might be. But you're going to be selecting the data, the unique identifier, the thing that you're going to match, and also the data that you want to pull back through. So I need to go into my other tab, and it's fine that it's on separate tabs. So if I go into that data tab, I need columns E and F because E is my match field and then F is the data I want to bring back. So I'm going to do E and F. That's absolutely fine. And then I'm going to do a comma because it needs to keep breaking it up. And the next thing it wants to know is the column index number. So what column do I want it to bring back? Now, going back to what I just did, that array, I selected columns E and F because that's the two sets of data I want it to look at. And the data I want it to bring back is in column F. So that's column two in the set that I selected because I only selected E and F. So E becomes column one and F becomes column two. So column two, so number two is what I'm going to put in. And then there's one final section if I comma it again. Do I want a true an approximate match, which is true, which is a bit, always find that a little bit weird, or do I want an exact match, which is false? Now I want an exact match. So I'm going to false, close my brackets and press enter. Now, if I come back onto my other sheet, it automatically populates it. Let's just make that bigger so it's cleaner. And you can see that I have complete in place. So A. Johnson, Word Basics is nice and complete. What I can do now is just click and drag that function down and then I've got my data. And what I'm going to do is just hide that so it's a bit cleaner. But you'll notice that I've got errors and that's because it's not finding that data. So even though David Davis might be on my data, he's, he might not have done Word Basics. He might have done another thing. So I want to clean it up and make it look a lot nicer. And I really just want it to be a blank when it doesn't bring back any information. And again, there's a really quick way that you can go ahead and you can do this by using an if error. And I'm just going to go in and show you how to do this really simply. So I'm going to go back into the function and I'm going to type this into the top bar because it's much easier to do this. And I'm just going to wrap my VLOOKUP in an if error and tell the system what to do if you get one of those error messages. So where the equal sign is, I'm just going to click to the right of it. And I'm just going to start typing in if error. And I'm going to select it. And you'll see now if error is in front of a bracket. So I've got if error and then it starts my VLOOKUP. So my VLOOKUP is nicely in the middle. So remember I said the if error wraps around it. So I now need to just tell Excel what to do if that error happens, which I've already got on a few cells. And I'll do that right at the end. So if I click at the end and then do a comma, because I'm just going to continue to break things up and you'll see it's shown there, value if error. So what do I want it to do? And I want to just leave it blank. And to leave it blank, I'm just going to press speech marks twice. I'm not going to put space in the middle of them or anything else. I'm just going to put two speech marks in there. And that tells Excel that I just want it to be blank. And remember to close your brackets. So I've now put an error fixer, an if error, leave it blank around my VLOOKUP. Really simple and really easy. And just take a snapshot of this if you need to take a copy of it so you can work it. But as soon as you start clicking into it, it will try to help you work through this process as well. And it's always simple. If you're not quite sure, just do your VLOOKUP first. And then if you're getting errors, then put your if, if error around the outside. And if I just press enter now, it's going to make that happy. And if I pull that down, fingers crossed, we are there. We have some nice blanks. So now it's just bringing back, if there's no data, then bring me back a blank. And it's nice and clean and it's nice and easy to work with. And what I can then do is continue to do this 
updating this data tab with any new bits of information, updating my function and just keep using it again and again to do my reporting. But nice, easy, quick way of making that happen. And like I said before, there is a ton of different ways. You can do some really complex ones. You can do some super simple ones. You could use count if you want and then change it to whatever you wanted it to say. But I just wanted it to pull back that cell. So this was a nice, easy way to do it. And I just used, it, used concatenate in order to pull multiple cells of data together and then I could match against those within the VLOOKUP. So let me know how you get on with that one. If you've got a different way of doing it, please do put it in the chat. Let's share our knowledge with each other. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and let me know what videos you'd like me to record next.